Zero Touch is a feature that you can use to provision the Quantum Spark gateway so you can easily post out the security gateway to non-IT users in order for them just to plug the WAN cable in and get the gateway up and running. It makes it really easy to pre-configure uh, a large number of gateways using a set template configuration and again ship them out and get somebody who is non-technical to actually just connect the cables and let the configuration get pushed out across the internet. So in this tutorial I'll walk you through the initial steps and here we're just going to be using the Zero Touch portal and I also have a Quantum Spark 1590 gateway that will be uh, connecting in this tutorial as well. So you can see I've browsed to zerotouch.checkpoint.com You're going to log in using your user center credentials. Now a key thing here is the Zero Touch feature and portal is connected to your Checkpoint user center account. So let's log in and take a look at what we can see once we've actually logged into the portal. Okay, so now I've logged in. One thing I will just mention at this point was I did get prompted to put my two-factor authentication code in and this ties to my user center account. So just remember if you're logging in, hopefully you have got two-factor authentication turned on and when you're prompted, that is the code for your user center account. So just use that and you'll be able to log in. Now what you can see once you've logged in here is right at the top here is actually the user center account that you may have. The drop down menu from here will actually give you access to the account that you will be able to see normally when you log into user center. Uh, this is the account that I've got where my Quantum Spark gateway sit inside and so that's what I'll be using to show you how to actually get this up and running. On the left hand side you have access to three different navigation menus, templates, claimed gateways and the inventory section. We're going to start with the templates. Let's go ahead and click new and we're going to select the small office gateway template. You can see here you have the ability to actually do it for the Gaia gateways as well. We we're focusing on the small office gateways. Once we've clicked that, we get opened a new menu where we're going to configure the template settings. And there's three different tabs here at the top. We're going to start off with the settings tab. We're going to give the template a name, make it something useful for your environment. Now, when you put in the template name, you can't have any spaces. So just bear that in mind. So I'm just going to call this home office. And we have two other tick boxes here, which we're not going to tick. Uh, we're not managing this via a centrally managed server, so we're not going to tick that. And it's also not under uh, construction. So we're going to just carry on to wireless country, select your necessary country, I'm in the UK, and then select the time zone. Next, we have administrator access to so select the sources you want to allow you as an administrator to be able to access the Quantum Spark gateway. Now, you as a corporate environment will have your specific IP addresses that you want to allow access to, whether that's from uh, the LAN side, whether that's from a VPN, or if that's going across the internet. So I'm just going to allow access from the internet, and I'm just going to allow from any IP address. Obviously, best practice, stick to specifying IP addresses for your corporate network, but in my home environment, I don't have a dedicated IP address. Then we need to put in our password that we want to have on the security gateway. So the password's now there. We can now move to the next tab, which is cloud services. We're not actually going to configure um, anything here, but now you have the option to configure reach my device, which is our relay service, which allows you to connect to the gateway, even when the gateway may be sat behind another router, so it's been natted behind another gateway, or if the gateway has a dynamic IP address and you still want to be able to reach it directly. And the other setting we have that can be configured here is Clish configuration. Now, if you're not familiar with checkpoint security gateways, Clish uh, is the command line interface where we can actually configure the configuration and commands. So that's what we're talking about here is actually being able to put the CLI commands into this box here 
and when the gateway is running for the first time when this template is actually being used those commands will be inputted onto the gateway and configured as per whatever you put in this box as an example i'm just going to put in my wi-fi settings because the gateway i have is wi-fi enabled so i'll just paste those in there from my uh, from my text template that i've got and you can see simple set commands that we've used to enable these features and parameters now that we've finished configuring this we can go ahead and click apply in order to save that template in our zero touch portal okay and there we go um, what you can see here now is the name of the template we've just configured we've given it a template id which is generated automatically when it was last modified may be useful to see if there were any changes done and actually the sort of description that I put in so I understand you know what this template is as you can see I've got multiple templates here the next step is actually going to the inventory tab and looking at the gateways that we have associated with our account again just to mention what you will see here is actually what is inside your user center account and specifically the account that you've chosen and selected over here you can see i've got two 1590 gateways here uh, and also a 3200 okay so what we're going to do is select the gateway that we're going to be configuring so that's this one over here and then click claim when we click claim we then actually get to assign a name to the actual gateway itself so we know uh, you know what this gateway is uh, and here I'm just going to put in home office uh, on the end of it here template select which template you want to actually apply so which configuration from which template you want to be applied to this gateway when it's connected to the first time or if there's a factory reset and then click apply great you get the box to tell you the gateway has been claimed successfully and there's some more instructions around you know uh, what the service is doing we can now click close over here now notice the status section here actually now says claimed so we know this gateway can now be used in the field to be deployed the other ones are not claimed now we can go to the claimed gateways because we now have a claimed gateway which is this one over here and what you can see at the top is some information to the MAC address, the name we just gave the gateway, the template that we've applied. And if we scroll using the bar down here to the right hand side, some more information around the deployment status, IP address, last status update. Now this is going to remain blank until the gateway is connected for the first time or if we've performed a factory reset on the gateway and it looks for the zero touch service again. So now what I'm going to do is actually going to plug in my gateway for the first time and what we'll do is actually talk to the Zero Touch portal in order to get it up and running. Now that the gateway has successfully downloaded the settings, we can actually browse to the IP address um, of the actual device itself. So I've got that over here and you can see that you know I've now got the login page. So Zero Touch was a success. All I did was we configured the template, we claimed the gateway, we then plugged the gateway in for the very first time. So all I did was connect my internet connection into the one port of my 1590 and let it boot up for the very first time, which is when it talks to the Zero Touch provisioning service. That brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Make sure you leave some comments and feedback and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.